a new life entered the world. But to the horror of all who were present, the baby did not resemble a human child. Instead, it transformed into a baby goat before their very eyes. In the heart of Ada's village, in Igbo land, lived a young lady named Urema. She was as beautiful as the sunrise, with eyes that sparkled like stars in the night sky. Urema grew up in a large hut with her family, surrounded by lush green fields and the gentle whispers of the wind. From a tender age, Urema was privileged to have everything she desired. Her father, a great farmer, tended to their land with love and dedication, while her mother held from a wealthy home. With abundance all around her, Rema's heart should have been as bright as the morning sun, but alas, it was not so. Rema had a flaw, a blemish upon her character that tarnished her beauty like a dark cloud in the sky. She looked down on others, even from her youth. She teased and made jests of children who she deemed beneath her, calling them poor and unworthy of her friendship. She boasted endlessly about her family's riches, using them as a weapon to drive away anyone who dared to befriend her. Her parents, wise and kind, tried to caution her about her wicked ways. Urema, they would say, kindness is a treasure far greater than gold. Treat others with respect and humility, for that is the mark of a true noble. But Urema would not listen. She turned a deaf ear to their words of wisdom, choosing instead to walk the path of arrogance and pride. As she grew older, her bad attitude only hardened like clay in the sun. She chased away any potential friends with her sharp tongue and haughty demeanor, leaving herself alone in the world. When Urema reached the age where suitors came knocking at her door, she scoffed at them one and all. You? She would say wrinkling her nose in disdain. You are not worthy of me. I deserve someone of higher status, someone who matches my lofty ambitions and grandeur. And so, the men who came seeking her hand in marriage were turned away, their hearts heavy with disappointment. But Urema cared not for their feelings, for in her eyes, they were all beneath her. But little did Urema know that her arrogance would lead her down a path paved with thorns and tissues. For pride, they say, comes before a fall, and Urema's fall would be as swift and sudden as a bolt of lightning from heavens above. As time flowed like a river, weaving its way through the days and nights of Ada's village, a man named D.K. entered Urema's life. D.K. was a wealthy hunter, his pockets lined with the spoils of his ventures into the wilderness. When he laid eyes on Urema, his heart skipped a bit, and he knew she was the one he desired above all others. With joy in her heart, Urema accepted D.K.'s proposal of marriage, and soon, they stood hand in hand, bound by the ties of love. Their wedding was a celebration that echoed through the village, as drums beat and voices sang in jubilation. In time, Urema bought Dike a precious gift, a baby girl named Asama. The girl brought light into their lives, her laughter like the sweet melody of a songbird in the morning. But Urema, with her heart still tainted by pride, whispered poisonous words into Asama's ear. Do not play with those children. She would warn, her voice dripping with scorn. 
they are beneath you, dirty and poor. And so, as Amma grew up shielded from the company of those deemed unworthy by her mother's harsh judgment, Urema shunned her co-wives, keeping them at arm's length and forbidding them from coming near her or her beloved daughter. DK, consumed by the demands of his work, remained oblivious to the dark clouds gathering within his own home. He knew not of Urema's cruel words and actions, for his days were spent in the pursuit of his livelihood. As time marched on, Urema found herself once again with a child, and this time her arrogance knew no bounds. She mocked her co-wives who had yet to experience the joy of motherhood, taunting them with her swollen belly and laughter. After nine long months, Urema gave birth to a bouncing baby boy whom they named Okeunwa. The village rejoiced at the arrival of the new addition to their family and festivities filled the air with joyous sounds. But even amidst the celebrations, Urema's heart remained hardened like stone. She continued to spawn her co-wives, her words like daggers aimed at their hearts. As the sun rose and set over the village of Adazi, Urema's heart remained cold and unyielding, like a stone that refuses to be warmed by the sun's gentle rays. Her arrogance and disdain for those around her grew like weeds in a neglected garden choking the once fertile soil of her soul. Her husband's family could bear her behavior no longer and they summoned DK for a meeting. With heavy heart and tear-stained cheeks, they pulled out their grievances, pleading with DK to rend his wife's cruel tongue and harsh actions. DK, a man of honor and integrity, felt a weight settled upon his shoulders as he listened to the tales of Urema's cruelty. With a heavy heart, he summoned his wife, hoping to reason with her and mend the fractures that threatened to tear their family apart. Urema, he began, his voice gentle but firm. I have heard troubling rumors about your treatment of others in the village. Is it true that you look down upon them and treat them with disdain? Urema's eyes flashed with anger, but she quickly marks it with a facade of innocence. They are just jealous of me, DK, she replied, her voice dripping with venom. They cannot stand to see someone as blessed as I am. DK sighed, his heart heavy with disappointment. Urema, please, he pleaded, I implore you to make peace with our family and neighbors. Kindness costs nothing, and yet it is the most precious gift we can give. But Urema's heart remained closed to his words, hardened by years of pride and arrogance. Instead of heeding his plea, she only grew more violent towards her co-wives, lashing out at them with words as sharp as knives. One day, as Urema's daughter, Asama, watched in silence, her heart heavy with sorrow, she found the courage to speak up. Mother, she said, her voice trembling with emotion, why do you treat others so poorly? Is it not better to show kindness and love? Urema's eyes narrowed, her anger flaring like a flame. They are beneath us, Asama, she replied coldly. They envy us because we have what they can never have. But Asama, wise beyond her years, shook her head in disbelief. Mother, she said softly, Surely, there is more to life than riches and status. Is it not better to be kind and compassionate? To lift others up instead of tearing them down? Urema's rage boiled over and she lashed out at her daughter, 
her words like a whip cracking through the air. What do you know, child? She screamed. You are just a six-year-old girl, too young to understand the ways of the world. Leave the grown-ups to their affairs. And so, the circle of cruelty continued unabated, as Urema's heart remained closed to the light of compassion and understanding. But as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, a new life began to stir within Urema's womb. A spark of joy ignited in her heart, for she had discovered that she was once again with child. With a smug smile upon her lips, she paraded her swelling belly before the eyes of the other women in the village, flaunting her happiness like a trophy won in battle. She adorned herself in the finest clothes, purchased with her husband's hard end wealth, using her children as pawns to boast and brag to those who could only watch with envy and longing. But little did Urema know that her actions would soon come back to haunt her. For the wheel of fortune spins ever onward, and what goes around must surely come around. As Urema's pregnancy neared nine months, her arrogance and cruelty knew no bounds. Each day brought with it a new opportunity for her to flaunt her wealth and belittle those around her. But little did she know that her actions would soon lead to the consequences beyond her widest imaginations. One sunny afternoon, as the village bustled with activity, Urema's cold wife, Ekutosi, called upon Asama to help her fetch water from the stream. Asama, eager to lend a hand, gladly accepted the task and set off with the bucket in hand. She made her way to the stream. The sun's rays dancing upon the water like a thousand shimmering diamonds. With each step, she felt a sense of purpose and joy, knowing she was helping her family in their daily chores. But as she returned home, the bucket brimming with cool, refreshing water, she was met with a sight that chilled her to the bone. Her mother, Urema, stood before her, her eyes ablaze with anger. Who sent you to fetch water? Urema demanded, her voice like thunder rolling across the sky. Ekutosi did. Asama replied, her voice trembling with fear. Urema's fury knew no bounds. And with a swift motion, she snatched the bucket from Asama's hands and poured its contents onto the ground below. Asama watched in shock as the water splashed onto the dirt. Her heart heavy with confusion and sadness. Urema yelled at Asama to go into their heart and never help anyone again. Ekutosi, who had witnessed the exchange from afar, approached Urema with tears in her eyes. Why did you pour the water away? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Urema's lips curled into a snare as she turned her gaze upon Ekutos. You have no right to send my daughter on errands. She spat, her words like venom, dripping from her tongue. You should be grateful I allow her to even speak to you. Ekutos' heart ached at the cruelty of Urema's words. She had endured much at the hands of her co-wife, but never has she been subjected to such a blatant disrespect. Just then, the sound of footsteps heralded the arrival of Dicky, returning home from his day's work. As he approached, he sensed the tension in the air and quickly intervened. What is the meaning of this? He demanded, his voice then. Ekutos, her eyes still wet with tears, recounted the events that had transpired, her voice trembling with emotion. Dicky's heart sank. As he listened to her tell, his anger rising with each passing moment. He turned to Urema, his expression grave. Is this true? 
He questioned, his voice tinged with disappointment. But Urema, ever defiant, refused to back down. She had no right to send Asama on errand, she replied, her tone unyielding. She should focus on having her own children instead of meddling in her affairs, barren woman. Dickie's heart sank at his wife's words. He had hoped that motherhood would soften her heart and temper her pride. But it seemed that was not to be. He apologized to Ekutos and dragged his wife inside their hut. That night, as Ekutos lay in her bed, tears streaming down her cheeks, she pleaded with her chi to come to her aid. She prayed for justice, for an end to the torment she endured at the hands of her co-wife. Meanwhile, in Urema's hut, DK pleaded with his wife to apologize to Ekutos, make amends for her cruel words. But Urema, stubborn and proud, refused to heed his words, her heart as cold as ice. One sunny day in Adazi village, as the birds chirped and the leaves rustled in the gentle breeze, Urema's time had come. With a sharp pain in her belly, she knew that her baby was ready to enter the world. Dike, her husband, rushed to fetch the midwife, his heart pounding with worry. As soon as the midwife arrived, she sprang into action, assisting Urema with her delivery. Minutes turned into hours, and finally, with a cry that echoed through the heart, a new life entered the world. But to the horror of all who were present, the baby did not resemble a human child. Instead, it transformed into a baby goat before their very eyes. Shock and fear gripped the room like a vice, and the midwife could only utter the word calamity. And she stared at the bizarre scene unfolding before her. Dickie's heart sank as he looked at his wife his mind reeling with disbelief. Urema, too stunned to speak, could only weep as she beheld the strange sight before her. But the strangeness did not end there. Asama and Okinwa, their other children, began to cry out in pain, their bodies contorting in ways that were unnatural and terrifying. Dike rushed to their side, his heart breaking at the sight of his beloved children in distress. The children automatically turned to imbeciles. Desperate for answers, DK sought the counsel of the village chief priest. With trembling hands, he relayed the events that had transpired. His voice filled with fear and uncertainty. The chief priest's face grew grave as he listened to DK's tale. This is a cause, he declared, his voice heavy with sorrow. Your wife's words had brought this calamity upon your household. Dickie's heart sank at the words of the chief priest. He pleaded with him to do something, anything, to lift the cause from his family. But the chief priest shook his head solemnly. There is nothing I can do at this moment, he said. We must wait until the next four market days before I can consult the spirits and seek their guidance. With a heavy heart, Dike returned home to his shattered family. Urema, consumed with grief and guilt, could do nothing but weep as she cradled the baby goat in her arms. Asama and Okinwa, their once bright eyes now dull with pain, lay silently in their beds. Their bodies wrecked with illness. They stoned into night, and still, the curse lingered over their home like a dark cloud. Rema prayed fervently for her deliverance, her heart heavy with regret for the words she had spoken in pride and arrogance. But as the days passed, and the village awaited the arrival of the next market day, hope began to fade like the dying embers of a fire, 
for what lay ahead for Urema and her family, only time will tell. As the sun rose on the day of reckoning, a heavy cloud of sorrow hung over Dickie's household. Okinwa, their beloved son, had not awakened from his slumber, leaving his parents to grieve his passing. Tears flowed freely from DK and Urema's eyes, mingling with the weight of their remorse and regret. DK's heart was heavy with sorrow, but it was also laced with bitterness towards his wife. He could not help but blame Urema for the tragedy that had befallen their family. With clenched fists and a voice thick with emotion, he accused her of bringing this calamity upon them with her pride and cruelty. Urema, her once proud demeanor shattered by grief, could only weep and beg for forgiveness. She knew that her words and action had caused immeasurable pain to those around her. And now, she paid the price in tears of sorrow and remorse. But amidst their grief, a glimmer of hope appeared on the horizon in the form of the chief priest. With solemnity in his eyes, he delivered the news that would determine the fate of Dickie's household. There is a woman in your household, he began, his voice grieved, named Ekutos, Hachi, angered by the injustice inflicted upon her, has taken revenge upon your family. Urema's heart sank as she heard the words of the chief priest. She knew that she had treated Ekutosi with cruelty and disdain, but she had never imagined that her words would bring such devastation upon her own family. The chief priest continued, his words carrying the weight of authority. You must go to Ekutosi and beg for her forgiveness. He said, only then will Hachi relent and lift the cause that has befallen your household. With a heavy heart, Dike knew that he had no choice but to heed to the words of the chief priest. He told to Urema, his eyes filled with pain and regret. We must go to Ekutosi and beg for her forgiveness, he said, his voice choked with emotion. Urema nodded, her heart heavy with guilt. Together, they made their way to Ekutos' hut, their footsteps slow and hesitant. But when they arrived, they were met with a closed door and a wall of silence. Ekutos refused to open the door, her heart hardened by the pain and humiliation she had endured at Urema's hands. DK's elder brother, Ekutos' husband, seeing the desperation in their eyes, offered to speak to Ekutos on their behalf. But even his pleas fell on deaf ears, as Ekutos remained unmoved by their words. As the night wore on, Dike and Urema stood outside Ekutos' door, their hearts heavy with despair. Asama, their remaining child, grew weaker by the hour, her tiny frame racked with illness. Through tears and sobs, they begged for mercy, their voices carrying on the night air like a mournful lament. But Ekutos remained unmoved, her heart hardened by years of pain and suffering. Dickens' resolve wavered as he watched his daughter crying in pain. He told Urema that if anything happens to Asama, that their marriage is over. Urema cried and prayed that Ekutos opens the door and forgives her and saves her marriage. Her co-wives laughing and mocking her just like she had done before then. They called her a good mother and told her that her mouth had finally landed her into trouble. The sun rose on a new day in Ada's village, casting its golden light upon the world below. But for DK and Urema, the down brought no relief from their troubles, only the weight of uncertainty and fear. Throughout the long night, they have stood outside Ekutos' door, their hearts heavy with despair. When she finally emerged, her face twisted with anger and resentment. She refused to speak a single word to them, her silence like a dagger to their hearts.
DK and Urema pleaded with her for her forgiveness. Their voices filled with desperation and regret. But Equitus remained unmoved. Her heart hardened by the pain and suffering inflicted upon her by Urema's cruel words and actions. As she turned and walked away, her footsteps echoing in the silence of the morning, DK felt a sense of helplessness wash over him like a tidal wave. He knew that their fate rested in Equitus's hands, and yet she seemed determined to see Urema suffer for her sins. Equitus traveled to her village just to stay away from all the chaos at her husband's family home. Throughout the day, DK and Urema remained in a state of silent anguish, their minds consumed by worry for their daughter Asama, whose cries of pain filled the air like a haunting melody. DK tended to her, to her with care and tenderness, his heart breaking with each anguish well that escaped her lips. Meanwhile, Urema cared for the newborn baby goat, her hands trembling with fear and uncertainty. She knew that their family's fate hung in the balance, and yet she could do nothing but watch and wait for the inevitable. As the day wore on, a sense of unease settled over the household like a dark cloud. DK paced the floor in distress, his mind filled with thoughts of his daughter's suffering and his wife's guilt. But amidst the chaos and despair, a glimmer of hope appeared on the horizon in the form of Equitus's husband. He had traveled to his wife's village to beg her for forgiveness on behalf of, his, of DK's family. Equitus, after much hesitation, agreed and told him to go, that she would return the next day. He returned from his journey to her village with news that she had agreed to forgive them. Dickens had soared with relief at the news and he embraced his brother with gratitude. Thank you, he whispered. His voice choked with emotion. Thank you for bringing us hope in our darkest hour. Urema's eyes filled with tears as she heard the news. Her heart heavy with guilt and remorse. She knew that their salvation lay in Equitus' forgiveness and yet, she could not shake the feeling that she did not deserve it. As night fell over the village, DK and Rema prepared for Equitus' return, their hearts filled with mixture of hope and trepidation. They prayed fervently for her forgiveness, knowing that it was their only chance at redemption. As the first rays of sunlight pierced through the morning mist, illuminating the village of Adazi, with a golden glow. A sense of anticipation hung in the air. Ekutos' return was awaited with battered breath. Her forgiveness the key to unlocking the chains of despair that had bound Dickie's household. And when she finally arrived, her eyes filled with tears at the sight before her. Dickie, Urema, and their family members knelt before her their faces streaked with tears of remorse and regret. Touched by their heartfelt pleas, Equitos' heart softened, and with a voice filled with compassion, she spoke words of forgiveness. Urema, she said, her voice trembling with emotion, I have forgiven you. Urema's heart soared with relief and gratitude as she rose from her knees and rushed to embrace Equitos. Tears of joy streamed down her cheeks as she thanked her for her mercy and compassion. With Equitus' forgiveness came a sense of peace and healing to Dickie's household. They gathered together to perform a ritual of cleansing, guided by the village chief priest. As the smoke of incense waved through the air and prayers filled the silence, a sense of renewal swept over them like a gentle breeze. Returning home, they were greeted by a sight that filled their heart with joy and gratitude. Asama sat inside their hut, cradling the newborn baby in her arms. Gone was the form of a goat, replaced by the sweet innocence of a human child. DK and Urema rushed to their side, their heart overflowing with love and relief. 
they hugged them tightly, grateful beyond words for the miracle that had been bestowed upon them. Urema took the newborn baby into her arms, tears of joy streaming down her cheeks as she thanked the gods for their mercy and compassion. She kissed the baby's forehead, feeling a sense of profound gratitude for the gift of new life. The villagers gathered around, their faces filled with wonder at the turn of events. They marveled at the power of forgiveness and the strength of unity that had brought healing to Dickens' household. Their families expressed their gratitude to Equitus for her forgiveness, acknowledging the role she had played in bringing about reconciliation and healing. Though they had lost Okinwa, they were grateful for the restoration of peace and harmony within their midst. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the village, Dickens' household stood together, united in love and gratitude, for they had learned that even in the darkest of times, forgiveness and compassion have the power to heal the deepest wounds and restore hope to the weary soul. As time passed in Ada's village, a sense of peace and harmony settled over Dickie's household. Urema, once filled with pride and arrogance, had undergone a remarkable transformation. She had learned the value of humility and compassion, and she was determined to make amends for her past mistakes. Gone were the days when Urema looked down upon others with disdain. Now, she welcomed her children's friends into her heart with open arms. Their laughter filling the air with joy and warmth. She made peace with her co-wives, treating them with kindness and respect and ensuring that they never lacked anything. DK too was grateful for the change he saw in his wife. He had feared that their family would be torn apart by pride and resentment. But now, they stood united in love and understanding. Urema had promised to be of good behavior and she had kept her word. Her actions speaking louder than words. One day, to the delight of everyone in the village, Ekutosi announced that she was expecting twins. Urema, filled with joy at the news, offered her assistance and support to her co-wife, eager to repay her kindness and forgiveness. As the month passed, Urema stood by Ekutosi's side, offering words of encouragement and comfort as she prepared for the arrival of her babies. And when the day finally came, Urema was there to welcome the twin baby girls into the world, her heart overflowing with love and gratitude. The village rejoiced at the sight of the newborn babies, their cries echoing through the air like a chorus of angels. Urema held them tenderly in her arms, marveling at the miracle of new life and the power of forgiveness to bring about healing and renewal. In the days that followed, Urema continued to lend her support to Equitus, helping her care for the newborn babies and ensuring that they never lacked anything. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day, a testament to the transformative power of forgiveness and reconciliation. As the years went by, Dickie's household thrived, their home filled with laughter and love. Urema had learned her lessons well, embracing kindness and compassion in all she did. She helped those in need, reaching out to her neighbors with a helping hand and a warm smile. And so, the story of Urema from Ada's village came to a close, a tale of redemption and forgiveness, of love triumphing over pride and resentment. For in the end, it is kindness and compassion that truly make us rich, and it is in loving others that we find true happiness and fulfillment. The story of Urema teaches us an important lesson about kindness and forgiveness. Urema used to be mean and proud, looking down on others because of their differences. But when her actions caused trouble for her family, she learned to be kind and caring. True forgiveness from Ekutos and a change in her own heart, Urema became a better person. The lesson is that it's important to treat others with kindness and respect, no matter who they are 
or where they come from. When we are mean to others, it can cause problems for ourselves and those we love. But when we choose to forgive and show kindness, we can bring healing and happiness to everyone around us. So, let's always remember to be kind and forgive others, just like Urema did, because that's what makes the world a better place for everyone. Thank you for watching this amazing story of Urema on African Stories. If you liked it and felt inspired with our journey, please show your support by clicking the like button, sharing with your friends, and leaving a comment below. To see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures, subscribe to African Stories and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired and keep smiling.